So I see you have on a Chicago Bulls hat. Oh, Can you tell me about that? Oh, definitely. All-time greatest NBA team ever to me. And, of course, the best player, Michael Jordan. <laughs> Is that your favorite player, Michael Jordan? Definitely. The, the GOAT, the GOAT you, you can't go wrong with Mike. You, you can't go wrong with Mike in, in any instance in basketball. Do you wear his shoes? I'm I'm not too big on the Jordan shoes. They they they're a little little heavy for me. They're a little heavy for me. I prefer something a little lighter. Is that one of your idols? I, basketball. I would say, as far as I love Jordan because of his kill, his his competitiveness. Not even so much just because he was great at scoring, but just because he was just such a great competitor on both ends of the court. Like it, it, it didn't matter. It didn't matter who he was guarding. It didn't matter who had to guard him. Just that, that killer instinct. Just being able to, whenever the time came to, to just go to another level. So I've heard that you've been on a six year hiatus. So what's been going on during that six years? What are you doing now that you're back? Man, a lot, a lot been, a lot been going on in, in six years. You know, jumped on the jumped on the minor league circuit. Kind of really wanted to be on the the business side of basketball. Like playing was great, but I think I think more more is missing on the business side now. I think you know basketball has just become you know real commercialized. It's more more about entertainment and you know all of the the commercials versus versus the actual game I, you know you you can see it in kids now you know kids aren't as you know they don't work on their craft as much um, it's almost a feeling of entitlement you know of course you got YouTube you, you just got things that weren't there when you know when I was coming through the circuit and now that these things are here, you know, a lot of kids, they got, you know, their own YouTube page, their own Facebook page, they're posting all their videos. But what work are you actually putting in? It's almost, like I said, a, sen a sense, of, sense of entitlement has so you come through. So social status and the way that people portray themselves is more proficient than the actual sport itself and the way that they play. Yeah, I think I think a, a lot of kids they they get they get lost in the mix, and you know, the the fun the funny thing now, even and it really starts in you know high school AAU, like it used to be, a lot of kids they go to public school. See now the the public school sector has pretty much been robbed by the charter school private school sector. So guy comes in. You know he does real well in public school next thing you know he's leaving to go to a charter school and I think by all of those kids especially the more talented kids being all on the same team it doesn't make them work as hard because I, I can think even me coming through high school you know some of my friends they lived in a different district or they may live down the street from me, go to a completely different high school, but we play AAU together, we play pickup ball together. And but when we see each other on the other side of the court, like it, it's personal. It becomes a it becomes almost, you know, bragging rights. But now I think, you know, kids kids they get on there and it's more about we don't really want to go against each other. We'd all rather go beat up on know guys that's not as talented as us you know I I think that that's that's bred a, a bad culture in basketball like like I think I think really how it was like in the 90s like a lot of guys had pride like I can even think in Greensboro like just so many places to play just so many just different areas to go to and every area had their own set of good players but now it, it's kind of like everybody, all the good players go to one place. That's where all the good players are. And I think that it's, it's kind of watered down basketball overall as a, as a sport. So 
So what would you bring back to the game of basketball? I mean, I think, I think for me, it has to be one I bring about the physicality. I, I think basketball is a little basketball is too soft now, you know. It, and even even when I play now, even whether it's pickup, whether it's rec league, you know, it's it's just like I said, th this sense of entitlement. Like nobody wants to be touched, nobody wants to give the ball up, nobody wants to do the things that it takes to to win. I was the guy that I took pride in doing the other things to win. That's why so many guys now, yeah, they have great highlights, great highlights. But you go and look at their team record, and their team record is, oh, they were 5-23. and 23. They were 4-27. Four, four and 27. Okay, yeah, you did a lot of great things, but y'all didn't win. Everybody wonders why the Spurs, as old as they were, they kept winning. Because they had a system of everybody understood their role. That's one of Greg Popovich's biggest rules on his team. Do your job. Do your job. We're, go we're, we're here to win. We're not here to pad your stats. And I mean, I, ju I just think that the, young the younger generation now, it's all about... Look, I scored 30 points. Yeah, you scored 30 points. You also lost by 22. <laughs> so, I mean, that's nice. I mean, you got a couple great highlights, but that team is going to the championship game and you going home. So. Okay. So you were talking about the different positions that everyone has to play. What is the hardest position to play? definitely point guard like, like point guard has to to be not so much physically but just probably the the most mentally challenging position to play and you know I, I've played point guard you know I play various other positions on the floor but primarily you know point guard and just just understanding where guys need to be you know the timing, uh, what to do when a pro when a play breaks down, uh, knowing your personnel, knowing their strengths, knowing their weaknesses, and just understanding how to put guys in the best position to be successful. And that that literally to me makes a good point guard. Like, but one thing I Magic Johnson is one of my one of my favorite players and I love the way that he runs the point and everybody can talk about the no look pass and the the baby hook but Magic Johnson was the best at seeing a play develop and a, another kid that I really like Jason Williams when white chocolate came into the NBA he had all the handles all of the flash but he was a master at seeing a play develop. That's how those passes happen because he could literally see where a guy is about to be and he's going to put it right there. And guys, guys going to walk right in. I mean, Chris Webber lived off of him. Vladi Divas lived off of him. Pejo Stojakovic lived off of him. And, and then he, while he was playing, it was fun. It was fun to watch. Like, like that's the type of basketball I like seeing. Well, you're talking about teamwork and all these players. Well, without a good coach, you can't have a great team. So who do you think is a very influential coach to you? Let's see. Who can I think? Of course, of course, the Zen master, Phil Jackson. He has his ways. Everybody has, his, has their quirks with him. But... He's a championship coach. He, bottom line, he's a championship coach. Uh, Doc Rivers, I think Doc Rivers is, he's a hes a very good coach. I think he, he understands how to relate to players, but also get guys to do their job. And even while Pat Riley was coaching, um, Pat Riley's real old school, you know. He's a he's a 
let's get in the trenches we're gonna wear them down and then we're gonna play fun you know fundamental basketball and you know even a very very old school coach you know going back to the the 70s was red Auerbach. red Auerbach recruited larry bird before larry bird even graduated college he was recruiting larry bird to the celtics but he was very influential in the celtic style of play moving the basketball setting screens you know looking for the open man feeding off of each other's energy and i think you know being a good coach you you can recognize certain things and you can relate to certain players and i i just think back to uh one of my old coaches gene banks you know played at duke played in the nba for six years played various places overseas and i was always amazed at how he could cuss us out and turn right around literally two sentences later and be the nicest guy but just we wanted to play hard for him we wanted to play hard and i think i think being a good coach and being able to inspire that in your players that they want to play hard for you they, they believe in your system they believe in you and what you're teaching them i think you know that that's a priceless thing that that's just beyond priceless can you tell me about some projects you have going on in the minor league circuit? Well, right now, currently, um, currently I'm working with with the High Point Heat. I, I actually started uh, the, like I said, the platform for the High Point Heat just just to give guys that legit shot. You know, give coaches that legit shot. Cause believe it or not, there there are coaches that are trying to make it to the next level, make it to college make it to the professional circuit and they need just as much coaching experience as a player and i think now with the saturation of basketball that there aren't as many legit opportunities as guys think i mean you can look on facebook like like man i mean my my facebook fills up with all type of this international camp that international camp uh this this minor league this minor league this minor league team this and that but at the end of the day is it a legit opportunity or are guys you know wasting their time yeah. and you know what one, one thing you know I, I i tell a lot of guys when you leave college that clock starts ticking and it ticks fast you may you'll look up one day you graduate in college the next thing you know you're 26 You've been out four years or three years or, wh or whatever the case may be. And Ed, the longer you're out, the harder it's getting because all of these one and done players, all of these younger guys, like this guy's graduating every year. It's a so lot of them. What is the oldest age range, age range to cut it off? To try something uh, different? Me personally, I'm kind of biased because I went to Mexico at 30. I got the opportunity to try out and play in Mexico at 30. So, again, I'm a little biased. I I think from a professional standpoint that the older you are, the more of a gym you have to be. Like like I I have a partner right I have a partner right now playing in Japan. You know, he's 37 years old. He's also 6'9". He's also played in the D League. He also played Division One, so that's an exception. I got another partner. He's a little bit younger than me. He's probably about 33. He's six eight. He didn't play Division One. He played Division Two. But he's a gem because he just has that motor, that competitiveness. He stays in shape. So I so again I'm a little biased. I can't really say when you should cut it off but you also got to be the the biggest telltale sign is being realistic with yourself if you're 30 years old and you're still talking about trying to get a look if you haven't already networked and got that look you know it's all it's practically impossible so what's your future plans after the circuit man phew 
I don't I don't think I'm ever gonna truly leave the circuit of basketball. Like I, I just love the game too much. Like I, I love seeing young guys, young women get off. Like like I, I genuinely have have a joy when I see a kid go out there and do his thing and you know the crowd going crazy for him because at one point in time, you know, we were those kids. Like like we we wanted that same thing. So I, I don't think that I'm ever going to truly walk away from it. And I want to give kids that the same experience that I had. You know, whether you make it to the pro circuit or not, just being able to get a free education, that's priceless. So you're very influential, obviously, to your players and your team. So what advice do you give other future players? Grind it out. Like... Like, get in the gym, work on your craft, network, 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 but be smart about your networking. You know, ask questions. I, I think that some of us get so caught up in wanting to play, and I've been there too. You get so caught up in wanting to play that you'll keep going with something, going with something, going with something, and the writing's on the wall. All right, this guy ain't no good for me. He ain't, he hasn't done this, he hasn't done that. You know, and nowadays with social media, you can talk to guys from all over the world. Like it, it wasn't like that, like that 10, 15 years ago. You could talk to a group of guys, you know, depending on, on your network, but now you literally can network all over the world. So guys not asking questions, that just kind of, that that's a real uneasy feeling for me and then just like i said grind grinding it out you know it, taking a serious look at yourself and understanding what you need to work on